this is the first step. We can say this is the first step about the freedom of expression. For years, Burma's journalists have been persecuted and imprisoned. Now, five formerly imprisoned journalists are free to speak out for the first time. Free to tell us about the changes, and the challenges. Through the eyes of those who are experiencing it firsthand, we find out if there is real change for press freedom in Burma. ပြီးအုပ်ယူရီးတိဘက်ဖြူတဲ့ကြားမှာဒီတစ်ခေါက်ကလင်းနေကြတော့လင်းနေလုံးကနေလာတော့အတွက်ဝန်းကာလာပ
Censorship has been lifted and images of opposition once banned are appearing on local journals. But less than a year ago, anti-media slogans were still being played on public television. The publicity DVB had gained through its extensive and worldwide coverage of the Saffron Revolution meant the military began specifically targeting them. But it had also raised their profile, and now more people inside the country wanted to join. I don't and indeed, less than two years after joining, Lala Wynn was arrested. Afraid she would put her colleagues in danger by revealing the DVB office, she went on a hunger strike. After six days of starving herself of food and water, she was hospitalized. Lala Wynn was just 25 years old at the time of her arrest. But in November 2010, just over a year after Lala Wynn's arrest, Burma held elections for the first time in 20 years. Despite skepticism over their legitimacy, many saw an opportunity for positive change, as for the first time in 50 years, the country transitioned from military rule to a civilian government. The NLD is Burma's main opposition party. Gathering here used to mean constant surveillance. In February, Winmore held a concert to celebrate his release. But although people can meet more freely, authorities are still keeping an eye on these group meetings. Sithuzea and Uzea are father and son. They too were VJs working for DVB who were imprisoned for their work. Just 20 years old at the time of his arrest, Sithuze was the youngest of the imprisoned VJs. Sithuze says the presence of his torturers at political events feels like a reminder of what will happen if people break the rules again. Situ 
Suzea was arrested in 2010 after a bomb went off at the Burmese New Year celebrations in Rangoon. In the aftermath of the blast, Situ Zaya began filming and he was arrested amongst the crowds. His father was also arrested and they were both accused of planting the bomb. Uze was drugged by authorities who tried to force a confession out of him. Uze has been to prison several times and has suffered under the hands of authorities before, so he knew the troubles his son could be facing. But although the family are happy to be reunited, they're still concerned for Situ Zaya, and they do not feel he can move about the country freely. Situ Zaya has been given the same seat number on four different journeys. He believes that this seat number identifies him as someone for authorities to watch. But freedom of travel in Burma has improved for some former political prisoners. A few weeks after her release, Lala Wynne decided it was safe to travel to Mandalay to meet the friend she was arrested with. <laughs> Mint Nai is a farmer and a volunteer teacher. Unlike Lala Win, he did not have the support of an employer while he was in prison. And now he's free, he can see how his family suffered without him. <laughs> Lala Wynne was disowned by her own family because of her work, but support from DVB and the international community meant that she was looked after and she became well known, which she says has made life easier. But for some DVB journalists who've managed to escape prison, continuing to work underground is the only option. My uh, goal is to get the uh, good real hide and story. So that's why I'm decided to be underground and also if you do publicly, public uh, TV journalism, you will be arrested many, many years. In 2008, Burma was hit by the worst natural disaster in its recorded history, Cyclone Nargis. It killed almost 140,000 people and devastated Burma's Delta region. Zed and his colleague T traveled to the region to cover the aftermath of the cyclone for DVB. But T, whose real name is Nui So Lin, was arrested. T, my, Nui So Lin, my colleagues, okay, he was working for the uh, DVB as, as a documentary filmmaker. Now he was arrested 2009. Now he has been in jail. Now he was released. 
Mueso Lin and Zed work together on the award-winning documentary Orphans of Burma's Cyclone. But by the time the film they made together broadcast, it was already too late. This is Zed and T from the Democratic Voice of Burma. I'm really so sad and because I'm thinking about T, my friend, my colleagues. Okay, he's in now, at the time he was in J, knowing nothing about the Rui Pat, knowing nothing about the, his, his documentary. Z and T have not seen each other since Nguyeso Lin's release. <laughs> Since Nguyen Silin was imprisoned, Zed has gone back to visit the Delta and see the children he filmed before. And now, Nguyen So Lin wants to do the same. Nguyeso Lin also joined DVB after the exposure of the Saffron Revolution and decided to film undercover. And now there are more options for journalists too. The popularity of social networking sites allows people to share media in a way they were never able to do before. Connection is very so I'm weak a little bit. I Facebook, Facebook, Baba. But although there are more options for journalists in Burma now, there are still things people are not allowed to say. With the absence of rule of law in Burma, journalists are still at risk. Although most of Burma's media workers have now been released, their release was under a clause known as Condition 401. <laughs> Journalists in Burma need to work not just freely, but legally. The legal system in Burma hasn't changed, and the vague and bogus laws used to persecute journalists still exist. <laughs> ตะลอดตองอุบลิมาลุยอ่ะมะนาบ่ตะลอดตรุษมาอัจฉริสုံเนี่ยตาเนี่ยบ่ตะชาอุ้มอีเลยซวยลุยอ่ะนะตะตั
Working for Exiled Media brings extra risk to the VJs because they have to use technology to send information outside the country. The DVB uh, is the one of the target of the government. That is why we are waiting for the opportunity to work officially, publicly. At the end of February, DVB's director, HN9, was allowed a journalist's visa and given permission to visit Burma. He was the first DVB journalist ever to enter the country officially and legally, and it was the first time he'd been home in 24 years. Okay. He met with Information Minister Jaw Sam, and they're now discussing setting up a DVB office inside the country and allowing DVB to work officially. The DVB journalists want to come out of hiding and be able to feel they can work without persecution. And that's what DVB's exiled journalists want too, a chance to return home. Uh, now uh, I, I come back to uh, Burma, I'm uh, so happy. In the few weeks since HN9's visit, DVB staff have been traveling to Burma as often as permitted to continue to push for media reform and to start reporting inside the country officially. The NDVB history, this is the first time we come and do the parliamentary reporting. This is beginning of the beginning for the new chapter of the DVB. And this trip, for the first time, they're taking some of the journalists who were formerly in prison with them to report from inside the parliament openly for DVB. <laughs> This is the first time that Win Moore and Lala Win have worked for DBB on an official basis, and it's given them hope for the future. If the new government can accept exiled media inside Burma and allow them the freedom they demand, then Burma's persecuted journalists are willing to forgive and media in Burma can really begin to move forward. The duty and responsibility of the, the people, an entertainer or performer or journalist, they are very important. So we shouldn't blame on the government. Also, this is a duty of people. The freedom of speech or freedom of expression is a very important, you know. So you, we, we should try first. Government, second. Zargana is a famous entertainer and former political prisoner who was also released after the new government came to power. He has been an icon for freedom of speech in Burma for many years. But now that people are beginning to taste some of the freedom he's long been demanding, he says it's up to them. This is the first step. We can say this is first step, very, very first step about the freedom of expression. So now we got that chance to use the, a little bit freedom Uh, 
Chono Gurane, Taro, Langley, you sat a big Kanzani at a Tapagale, your Niger Tara, Power and Pamalet, than the other Niger no Shida or Dodo. And as sanctions on Burma are already beginning to be eased by Western countries, this is the time for the law to change. Those in Burma who were previously locked away and silenced have finally been given a voice. But for things to continue improving, they need to continue to push for reform, and they hope the government will be listening. Introduction of one